For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Outdoors Outdoors with me, Mike. Sending you guys a bit of a sort of pitching slash tutorial video on a tent from Easy Camp. So this is the Easy Camp uh, Moonlight Yurt. So it's a tent that's designed to be kind of almost like a central hub, something that you can pretty much kind of play around with and always have it as a gazebo, have it as a sort of sleeping area. It's really quite nice and versatile. So we'll kind of go through the pitching process of this. If you want any sort of more information about the tent itself, what you can also do is check the link below this video. It'll take you directly through to our websites where we've got all the information sort of located there on sizes and prices and so forth. So let's first thing to do is unravel this out. Quite nice and easy. The poles you want to probably separate just initially for the time being. What we'll do is we paste the sort of peg the base of it out first, then it's sort of happily secured down, and then we can kind of go about uh, then go about happily making sure the poles are sort of assembled and then fed through. So We'll start with basically pegging the opening of the door. Uh, so it's the key point there. Really what you want to do is just peg through this little loop where you've got the ringing pin. Directly peg for that initially. We want to create almost, because it's almost like a hexagon kind of shape, we want to sort of do the two corners that sort of align with one another. Like so. Then we'll go and do the back. We almost want to create almost like a rectangle kind of style, getting that ground sheet really nice and taut. And then once we've done that, we can kind of do the uh, additional wing. And again, get that pegged out. Oh, you come back, have you? So once we've got to this point here, it's all nicely secured down. Doesn't matter the wind suddenly comes, it's not going to brush it away at all. Now, what we'll then do is we'll get the poles out. Now, the joys of this in many ways is all the poles are the same length. So you haven't got to worry about what one, which one goes where. Um, all you can do is just quite happily spread them out. Quite nice and neatly. And then basically we're then going to sort of feed them through one by one. By having it all sort of fed through initially before we kind of put the structure up, it makes life a lot simpler as well. It means you're more in control. And really, to be honest with you, if you've got a second person help me with this, it does make quite a, a big difference. Uh, it saves you putting additional sort of strain on the poles and again on the material. So it all kind of happily kind of adds up really. So we're just going to sort of kind of position them initially where they need to go. Also, you can be a bit more gentle than I am with this. <laughs> oh dear. So, now we've kind of done that, so we've got kind of where the poles, where we want them to be, we want to kind of marry up where the seam, basically the ring point is going down vertically up, so we know where we're feeding it to. So, we're going, we've got essentially a, almost like a central hub that's located here. It's making sure that you're feeding the right pole directly through to the right side. So essentially directly crosses over as you see. So let's just start with the first sleeve. Again, I'll say this is where a second person really does make a bit of difference because it just means it's more manageable, quicker to put up, but for the premise of the video, obviously, you can see it can be done by one individual on their own. I would always be very careful when you're feeding these things through because of the metal points, sometimes you put too much strain on it and you end up kind of ripping the uh, the actual kind of sleeve itself. Oops. Excuse me. So it comes at the end. The trickiest part I would definitely say is kind of the pre-angled joint. Where you find that's usually the point where if it wants to catch or catches on the metal kind of the metal ferrule, that's usually the key. Now the poles itself are in two different diameters. So you've got essentially a slightly thicker diameter for the upright section, and then the crossover point has a slightly thinner, so it gets a bit more of a curve. Uh, you can kind of throw a bit more to it. So now we've done the one, we'll do the next one. And this probably, if anything, is probably the most time consuming part. 
Um, and like I said, there's a bit where you can't really get around it is with these kind of air poles. Traditionally, these kind of dome kind of styles are a bit more fiddly than, you know, other normal kind of crossover points. Um, sorry, normal sort of tunnel sections, just because you've got a lot of points going around the same region, more material, more fat, and it's a little bit more intricate. So just take a little bit more time, but I said on the grand scheme of things, it's not overly too bad. Through there, through there, through there. Ideally, you want to make sure you've got an equal amount of pole on either side. It makes it just a little bit simpler when you get to the sort of latter stage of putting the ring in the pins. It means you haven't got too much sort of weight on one side in comparison to the other. And then the final pole. There is also an extra little hub like a little roof protector kind of part which we've got to put in on at the end you can in theory put this on now but for me i find there's a little bit too much going on you know it's easier just to deal with as minimal parts as possible and just do that a little bit later it's a little bit more fast because you've got to put almost like a little canopy on the top but for me it works a bit easier doing it that way like i said you haven't got to worry about poles they're not going where they're meant to so we go, so we go, so we go. It's always that little hub, always a bit of a tricky point. What are you doing? Right, what are you up to? So now we've done that, we'll just put a few of the uh, points in the ring in the pin. I would probably say it's easier to do the back ones and leave the fronts the last because you can go actually inside from the front and just help and elevate it. So what I'm gonna initially do here is just kind of push that a little bit further forward, pop them in. I'd always recommend doing kind of two initially. So by doing two initially, this is where ideally you want someone just to kind of go into the center of it, lift up and take the weight out of the material. But unfortunately I haven't got that luxury. So we'll just do it on my own. So now we've got those ringing pins in place. What I want to do is kind of just feed back against it. Now, if we pick the material up, I said, because we're going inside of it, we can bear a little bit more of the weight of it. Now we're in this position here. We can kind of just push the poles in, stand them up a little bit more upright, and use the ground to almost dig the pole in a little bit, making sure it's just fitting over the sleeve, it's not catching anywhere. With this scenario, because we've got the wind helping me a little bit, it is making a little bit of a light breeze. So we'll basically put that in the front there. Put that in the front there. That pole snipped out the back, it's not a problem. So, now we've got kind of the main part of the crossover done, we can just then clip the additional poles on. So, I'll just kind of clip the poles in place. Just so we know it's not going anywhere. The key pole definitely tends to be the one in kind of the top corner here. There's more kind of stress and strain going through that. So that's where you want to be a little bit more careful with that. But nothing out of the rounds of ordinary. One thing you might need to do in many ways is pull the fabric a little bit towards it. You find it's just catching a little bit, but it shouldn't be too far. You want it to be still quite sort of snug anyway. More fingers and thumbs today. So, 
now we've kind of got the front and back, we can then do those kind of wings. It's in many ways the same kind of principle that we did when we pegged out initially. Now, the pole's a little bit too, bit one-sided, so we'll just bring that through a little bit. There you go. We'll put it in the ring and pin on this side. One clip on just yet, we'll make sure it's, it's quite equally, uh, equally done. Wicked. So. Clip that on. And we'll do the same for the other side. So now the pole structure's up, what we can then do from there is we'll shut the door. So we want to shut the door before we actually peg it. Reason being is we don't want to kind of stress, sort of overstretch the door itself. And the other thing we've got is that little canopy as well. So you see how it's kind of vented on top. We've got some covers to get that. So during a, you know, on a nice sort of summery day or if it's you've guaranteed no rain, in the field, what you can always do is kind of uh, just have ventilation point. But for, I think for certainly the English weather, or British weather, I should say, you always, always, always are going to want to put this kind of this sort of canopy on. You've also got this little bit of bunting as well, uh, which is quite quite quirky. Um, but I'll tell you what, let's tell you what we'll peg it out first. Let's let's peg and go out first. Make sure it's secured before we go and do anything else. You've got this really nice kind of little quirky little uh, hidden guy rope points. So you, they're just little feeds under here. You can just pull it out like so. And then guy out from that point. So it's a little sort of pocket. So it's a little triangle point which actually is pre-stitched in but it also hides the guy rope so it keeps it all neat and tidy. So you haven't got to worry about uh, you know, it getting mixed in with the mess as you see it. You've got a little justice on here as well so you can actually tailor it to your own kind of ability. So you can if you find it slackens off at all, you can happily just tension it without actually having to remove the peg itself. That's on the wrong side. That's better. Do, 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 do. Right. But in many ways, it is just like a little bit of a dome. Like I said, and that's where, that's where we talked about earlier how you can use it almost like a hub uh, or whatever you kind of want to do with it, really. So it just gives you a bit more versatility that it's, it's suddenly it's a storage tent, it's a pup tent, it's a, a, a scout tent where anyone can sleep anywhere. Whatever you want to make of it, really. Right, two more guide points, and then the main body is up. This is a bit, feels a little bit longer winded, but that's the idea of it. Cool, and last but not least. The thing I think for me is the price point of this. So what you know, what you pay for, what you get, and what you can kind of create and do with it is kind of why it's quite unique. You know, it's around about sort of two hundred pound price point, but you've got a shelter or the versatility of a, a, a you know, a, like a base in many ways. And okay, I mean, it's the colour of it is not particularly immediately with the dreary light of winter. It's not the most uh, colourful tent, but that's where you've got additional bunting which uh, kind of makes it a little bit more of a, of a nice point. Now, there's an inside and outside to the roof part itself. So the first thing you want to do is kind of find, for me, I, personally, I think the bunting point, I'm going to use that as kind of the front door. Because it's designed that any side will fit on any side, it doesn't really make a difference. But for me, I quite like the idea of having bunting over the front door. So what we're initially going to do 
is kind of just Velcro the first part on. So we're going to Velcro out around the pole itself. Take it so it's almost upside down at the moment. Velcro that bit on as well. Very caught on. There is also a secondary kind of uh, clip that's located there as well. So what you can do is this little, the little guiding point there will actually go into that. I'm just going to clip onto that point now. Now what I'm going to do is almost take kind of the furthest point across and we'll take it directly over the top. Again, when you've got a second pair of hands, it makes life a little bit easier, but you can still kind of do it in the same kind of idea. There are guy ropes pre-attached to this. So if you want to, what you can almost do as well is sort of just already pre-undo that guy point. And that's just then your lasso to go over the top of it. So that will then help when we get around to the other side. That's looking better. To be fair, that kind of comes down a little bit deep, longer than I thought it would. So actually, we'll initially unpeg that a little bit. Got a little hook, it's just located down the bottom there. So it brings it over a bit more, so you've got definitely a bit more of a, you stuck it, <laughs> a bit more of a power. But having that Velcro initially just kind of supports it in place. It just allows you to have a little bit more slack to take it over the top. But you can see how kind of that extra sort of protection layer, and even though essentially it's a single skin tent, that secondary layer is going to help. It's going to help to kind of have a bit more insulation as well as kind of that sort of um, general kind of, well, that sort of double skin. You've got ventilation coming through so you can get a good amount of sort of airflow throughout of it. Uh, and then finally, just get the bunting sorted. Do, 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 do. So there's there sort of two bits of buttons you can sort of tie it on a bit differently. For some reason, whoever's had this before me has absolutely had a mock-up job of it. So really, I think to be fair, you want to tie it on, tie it on like that. And then, hello and welcome to At Walls Outdoors with me, Mike. Uh, no. Wait, back we go, back we go, back we go, back we go, there you go. So now we're going to take down the yurt and show you a bit more information about the best way of doing it and a few tricks as well to make it life a bit easier, especially when the wind is absolutely blowing a gale like it is today. So first thing we'll do is we'll sort of do the same sort of thing in reverse. So if we take the uh, kind of canopy off, it's going to allow us to get a bit more uh, sort of access to the pole sleeves at the top and stop everything going a bit sort of peaked on. Um, we'll take the bit of bunting off the back. Just makes life a little bit simpler. It exposes that roof again as well. So I'll take it off the time being because it's obviously going to end up in the hedge behind me. Let's chuck it in there. If we lay it out then it's not going to be too much of a, a worry. Um, oh, Joyce. Right, now what we'll do is we'll basically remove the external guide points. Now, if it's a bit windy like it is at the moment, in theory you could, to be fair, leave the front two facing where the guide points are. That way it's just going to make sure that, um, you know, you've got stability where it needs it. 
And what you can always do in many ways, if you've removed the pegs and rotate it round, you can find that the wind's gonna help you rather than hinder you. So rather than blowing directly into the front door, it sort of pushes the air out the opposite way. What we'll do is probably gonna drop it uh, from the back a bit easier. So if we just remove all of the uh, clips that are on the poles initially, just to take a bit of the, uh, the stress out of it. Right. Like anything, like I said earlier, for the pitching, same for the packing, a second pair of hands does make life a lot easier. Just sort of quickens up these jobs. But it's not how the realms are doing it on your own, especially if you know sort of a, a single parent or someone wants to go away initially without sort of you know their partner, just make life a little bit simpler. So now we've got to that stage. Now what we'll do is basically take uh, we'll take the side ones out initially. So go wide was that out with that. That's where you've got to be a bit careful; it doesn't blow. So now we've got those three kind of undone. We'll spread them out, lay it down, try and get that looking a bit flatter. Do, do, do. So now it's flat. We're basically all we're going to do now is just push the extra fabric out. I'd always start with the whatever is on the top, really. The weight of the poles helps us kind of keep that sort of the material quite low. And we can just just fill that directly in as we go. Again, you want to be careful not to kind of catch it too much because it is one of those things that can easily sort of snag and you end up kind of ripping, like I said, the sleeve and the extra tent as well. Tip's got back on somewhere. Do, do, do. And we're out. Next pole will go for that way. The lower you can keep it down to the ground, the, the, normally the smoother it tends to feed through, albeit the angle joints are the worst part, of course, like I said earlier, but just makes life a little bit easier. And that one's out. And then last but not least, uh, we'll go that way. Last pole is always a lot easier because there's a lot less going through that central kind of hanging point. And once we got to here, what I like to do is sort of get in the middle of the pole, split it directly in half. And then you can do two poles at a time. Let's get the bag. Cool. And what we use, I always use that as a bit of a weight. So if you've got extra bits, you just put it on there, stop it uh, blowing away. And again, we'll split that in half. Get, take that out. What? Feed it through. <laughs> One of the joys of many ways of having the cap removable is if you, for example, if it's a rainy day, if there's no bit you can dry out separately, it means that you get also create yourself a little bit more room in the main bag. And I will say, actually, to be fair, we'll see how we get on, but the bag is initially quite tight for my liking. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit too snug sometimes. That's why you can always remove the poles to make sure you get it back in the bag. So now we've got this point here, I'm just gonna bring that material a little bit out, just lay it a bit further. So we're doing the same thing as we did in reverse, so almost gonna fold the ends in. The reason we're doing this is to try and push kind of the all of the internal air either through the mesh at the top or out the front door. We're gonna fold it in either side and then roll towards the front door 
So again, making sure that external layer, sorry, so the internal layer sort of escapes quite happily. One of the tricks I like to do in this when you've got, say, the wind blowing and you're sort of pegging directly into the wind is you can almost kind of do your pegs and hold it. So if I remove that pegging point, I want to fold it almost in half. I'll peg it in the ground there, peg it in the ground at the back, and it just kind of holds and creates a fold. It then means I can kind of carry on. If you push the air out as and when it wants you to, then when you're in this position here, the last fold can just flip over the top. Suddenly you've got it all kind of free ready to go. It's secured. You can get your extra bit of cord to tuck it underneath, not to worry about it. Leave those pegs in place and the wind can blow as much as it like, but that's going to stay where it needs to be. The key is you want to make sure you get a really nice and tight roll. So by starting off as tight as possible, it makes a lot of difference later on as we go along. Peg, peg, and we'll tie that up. And then for the moment of truth. Just lay that over the top. Lengthwise, it's already not a problem. Flip that over. Mm -hmm. So I've gone probably a little bit shorter than I should do. So that's it's a nice bath fit. So yeah, like I said, any more information you need on the year, follow the link below straight to our website, all the information's there. But yeah, let us know what you think of it. It's one we're looking to have up on our indoor display showroom as well, so you can always check it out. But that's kind of our little packing video and also the fishing video for the Eater Camp. Moonlight, you're at 10th.